Hi, my name is Jenica Lawson, and this week for our discussion, I read the nonfiction book, Vincent Van Gogh, Portrait of an Artist. Originally published in 2001 by Jan Greenberg and Sandra Jordan. Jan Greenberg and Sandra Jordan originally started publishing books together in the 1990s. Uh, their first book was The Painter's Eye, Learning to Look at Contemporary Art, which basically helped young readers understand art and distinguish how the composition of artworks gave purpose to the art and its understanding. From there, they began to publish several books related to the art world, whether it was artists like Vincent van Gogh or um, art pieces or an artistic style. Both Greenberg and Jordan grew up with a passion for learning and reading, and so um, especially for nonfiction books. So it was no wonder that they went towards like nonfiction writing. Um, I personally picked this book because I've always loved art and Vincent van Gogh has always been an artist that intrigued me. So it was very interesting for me to read a book that was more in depth about his life in a more simplistic manner than a college art textbook. Um, a little synopsis about this book is uh, Van Gogh was a misunderstood, yes, yet talented artist who did not have an easy life. Van Gogh started out as an art dealer and then he became a preacher who failed. And then after a lot of trouble, he became jobless and was fully supported by his brother, Theo, who was his sole confidant, family member, friend. Um, it wasn't until Van Gogh moved to Arles that he found solace in his art and he started to study Impressionism more. Um, he was not a popular artist at all in his own time. In fact, he only sold one painting um, while he was alive. Uh, however, today his art really transcends time and it shows empathy and feelings and the gratitude he had for life and for people. Which is why I think this book is very appropriate for ages 9 through 15 or grades 4, four through 8. Um, this book doesn't have too much complex um, words, and it has a very, like, it's set up in a chapter book style, so it's easy for them to read. Um, this book paints the picture of Van Gogh's life. It it doesn't just go detail by detail like some nonfiction books do. It describes him in different situations and the feelings he was having, and um, which were thus translated into his paintings and his letters. So kids can see, like that um, comparison. Um, this book is an interpretive nonfiction book because Greenberg and Jordan interpret some of the scenarios in Van Gogh's life because obviously he wasn't able to document every single part of his life. However, because Van Gogh sent a lot of personal letters to his brother Theo, a lot of his personal feelings and reactions to things were documented, which made it possible for Greenberg and Jordan to make this a very personal story for its readers, which makes it so intriguing for not only younger kids, but for college students like me. Um, interpretive nonfiction books are described in a way that takes you on a journey, and I can fully agree that this book takes you on a journey when you read it. Um, this book also has expository writing because it is fact-based and directly tells the life of Vincent Van Gogh. Um, this, based off of the organizational patterns of this book, um, it is its description is very informative. It provides information about him from the beginning to the end of his life. This in a chronological order, which is the sequence of the book. Um, in the comparison and contrast section of the organizational pattern, that's really evident in the way that um, Vincent Van Gogh is feeling at the certain points of his time. So like when he's feeling sad, uh, it has very like dark and sad feel to it. But when he's happy, like um, he really liked the color yellow. So when he was happy, like he would paint paintings with a lot of yellow in them and it'd have very like bright and like just happy writing. Um, a problem slash solution in this book is kind of like when he's, uh, not feeling good, like Vincent van Gogh lived in Paris for a good portion of his life and towards, 
the end of his stay in Paris, he just began to loathe the city, which he once so eagerly embraced. Um, however, he soon moved to Arles, and with his housing problem solved, Vincent felt upbeat. On sunny days, he ventured out onto the countryside to paint the fields and view the town. So that was shows like he was very happy. So that was like a problem slash solution in his own personal life that Greenberg and Jordan were able to depict. A cause and effect is that Vincent van Gogh was not in a healthy mental state for most of his life. He was actually very miserable and it's pretty common to hear that he wasn't all there. It's um, suspected that he had epilepsy. So that really messed with his mental state. So when it started to deteriorate, he actually uh, put himself in an insane asylum. Um, so to keep this book going along, some ed organizational tools were used to help the, the audience understand better. So a table of context, a glossary, a timeline, a bibliography, and source notes are all implemented in this book for children to understand. Um, some graphics and visuals that this book includes aren't very many. It's mostly a chapter book, but in the middle it has pictures of his artworks, um, which is pretty cool. And they're very clear photos. Um, this book also has a map in the beginning of it, which shows like where Vincent van Gogh was traveling for a lot of his life and where he went. And then, um, it has pages like about the author and then it has like uh photography credits and just going through each page and museum locations it's a very informative um back of the book organizational tools that really help children um overall the text enhanced my understanding of the topic just making it very clear and like very personalized like you can feel the feelings that van gogh was feeling and having that ability to connect with someone that was alive so long ago um is really important as a reader because you're reading this book to get to know more about them so having personal feelings in your own interpretation of the book is very important uh, finally would i recommend this book yes i would i I would recommend it to anyone, but especially people who love art and want to know more about art. And honestly, it's just a good read. Greenberg and Jordan did a great job, and it's very appropriate for children. Um, anyways, that's the end of my discussion. Thank you!